time to check in with our chief meteorologist, Tom Sorrells. From what I understand, he has another talk to Tom for us. What's cooking, Tom? They do. They tell me Don's going to be on standby in just a moment. I want to show you radar first before we dive in with Don. This storm system is really kind of ugly. It is weakening. It's not weakening fast enough for our taste. You do see the way it's pinwheeling around. Someone wrote in and asked, why in the world are they still saying it's going to come to the north? It, it is. Pal, it's going to come right up through here, right through this zone. And so you can tell on the radar and everything that's going towards Sebring, sort of, yeah, it's jogging over that way. But honestly, if you're looking at this the way it's jogging up to the north, it's going to come into Osceola County over the course of the next several, several hours and then roll its way this way up and out. We really believe we'll get a brand new path at 11. That's when the Hurricane Center will make any corrections they're going to make. But please believe all the modeling was going in that same general direction. So it's raining hard. Here's the wind intensity and timeline from Fort Myers to Orlando and then out through Volusia County by tomorrow into tomorrow evening. So we've got a long, long run to get this over with. Probably, let's see, it's almost 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock on Thursday night, well, yeah. We should be in a much better ball game, a much, much, much better situation with the activity here. Here's radar showing you what it looks like now. There is no real bottom side to it. Our modeling pretty much nailed that pretty well. As we were watching this thing develop, I was like, well, is that really going to be able to do that? But I think it really has. Here's the 9 o'clock advisory. Wind speeds are down to 105, so it continues to weaken. It's down now to a Cat 2, so it's sucking in some dry air on the backside, I believe, being sheared a little bit by the, the flow. You see it's kind of looking like elongated, like it's almost getting squished, like it's in a press. See, it's doing that on the backside. Keep on weakening, keep on weakening, keep on weakening. But you got to remember that as much as it's weaker now by 50 miles per hour than it was when it made landfall, wind speeds of 105 are just awful. I, I think people are kind of like, oh, yeah, it's not going to be a big deal. It's only a Category 2. It's only got wind speeds of 105. That's really, really serious and really, really bad. All right, let's go ahead and talk to our friend Don. Don, where are you calling from, man? This is Tom Searles. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. I'm calling you from Buena Ventura Lakes. Okay, Don, and that's, that's okay. Okay, hold on. We'll try to zoom in on Kissimmee and see what you're going through. You have a question for us tonight, Don, or what's going on? Yeah, um, me and my son just recently went through the uh, weather spotter training for Skywarn, and oh, awesome. we're wondering um, if the uh, tornado risk goes down with the fact that the, uh, you know, the uh, it's decreasing in its strength and whatnot, and if that, because I know we, we had the, uh, tornado warnings earlier uh, in Osceola County, mm -hmm. the Brevard line that you yeah, came yeah. on the air with. Yeah, yeah, and we actually had one confirmed touchdown. A, a spotter went out there and shot video of the damage that was on the ground. And that's the kind of work you'll be doing if you do that at all. You're eligible to do that. So your question is, does, does the tornado risk go down as the storm falls apart? Yes. Not really so much. What really is going to happen is that the pinwheeling around and the deterioration of the storm will still lead to the possibility of several. What really gets it going is when it is super strong, though. So it may drop a little, but what really gets the thing going is when we have a low here in the Gulf of Mexico, Don. And it doesn't even have to be a tropical low. This happens a lot in the wintertime, too. If we get one of those Colorado wave cyclones that instead of going up from Colorado into the Ohio Valley and producing snow, if we're in an El Nino year and they're tracking across the Gulf, We'll get those winter storms coming through here instead of tracking up. And all of a sudden you get one here low in the Gulf, cranking that arm around of that. It just blows up. So anytime we have instability in the Gulf and a cold front or a front lifting through here, warm front lifting through here, things go crazy. And we get all kinds of spin and rotation. And the heavy rain brings that rotation down to the surface. So as this thing falls apart, there's still every real possibility. We'll end up with more warnings during the overnight. It may awesome. go down just a little bit, but there'll be more. No, it's not awesome. <laughs> Did you just say awesome? Well, I mean, it's awesome <laughs> to know this, to, to knowledge, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. you know. Um, now, what made you want to become a weather spotter? You just like weather? Well, actually, my son's been a guest of yours, uh, Christian, uh, and uh, Tiffany watches you every morning. Oh, Gervais. And you're a little, yes, yes. I know, I know. I, yes, he came in here. Yes, he did. Yes, yes, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still have the hat. Yeah, no, we the do appreciate hat. it. I mean, yes, exactly. Hold on. What town um, is it? It's a, it's a fireman's cap. It's a black cap with the logo of the fire South department. South Meriden Fire Department. What's from the name Connecticut. of it? I actually, I just, came, I just came back from uh, visiting family in Connecticut. My wife was paying attention to you. Awesome. And I just, I was supposed to fly in Thursday, but 
luckily he came in on a Tuesday and just before the airport closed. Aren't you glad here to be with and, the family during this time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, All right. Well, I'm thank glad you for I'm back call. and thank you. All right, and, man. Uh, Hope to hear from you Thank you to you and uh, Troy and everyone else on your uh well, I think that, Troy's that, asleep uh, right now. He did 12 on yeah, and 12 sure off. He he's here somewhere sleeping. I hope he's sleeping because at 2 o'clock, he, <laughs> he needs to relieve Big Daddy Tom. Or not. Not a problem. Thank or not. you, Tom. I may just stay up all night. You know how I am. All right, well, listen, tell Christian I said hello. I appreciate it. You too. Have a all good right. day. Talk to you, buddy. Bye. All right, bye-bye now. There you go. All right, yeah, Christian is a, is a great kid. He was, loves the weather. And that's what happens. They end up with friends who love the weather. You know, if you love, yeah. like, you know, I don't know. Name a sport I don't like. I mean, but I, I, I sometimes can't remember people I met yesterday, Tom. Oh, you would. You knew these guys. <laughs> no, you I know. That's Young. great that you knew all of that information. Oh, and yeah, just yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Tom not. doesn't forget anything. It's what makes him uh, an incredible <laughs> weatherman. It is a steel trap. <laughs> up. He's it's Google true. before it was Google is what he likes to <laughs> there say. There you go. I was and, great before Google and now I'm just worthless. <laughs> <laughs> but now you get to flex those muscles on Talk to Tom and, and people. Lots of people thanking Tom uh, for all the hours he's putting in. I know my wife just texted me. Tom is really, really good. Aww. And then she threatened <laughs> to have my mother-in-law call in Talk to Tom Oh, my goodness. Hour. I, uh, well, you know, it's very tempting. we only have 10 hours left of coverage here, guys. <laughs> I think you can take some calls. <laughs> I would love that. Wait, they're telling me there's someone else yeah, on the phone one. line. Who is it? Better not be Our my mother. Bobby in Hunter's Creek. Talk to me, Bobby. What's going on in Hunter's Creek tonight? Hey, Tom, how are you? It's raining to beat the band, isn't it, brother? Yeah, thanks for fielding my phone call. I got a couple of questions for you. You've taught us over the years that the northeast quadrant of NEI is the worst part of the storm. Pretty much. But on radar for the last four or five hours, it looks like the west side of the storm is the worst. Why is that? Uh, I, I was trying to figure that out earlier. Matt and I were talking about it. Matt's been watching hurricanes his whole life, too. First of all, this is not a totally normally quadrated storm. Normally, when we talk about when you look at a big circle on the map, when you look at a big circle on the map, get your big hurricane going here, and we do the quadrants, We'll take and cut it yep. you know, like this. Cut it right into quadrants. And you say, well, this is the dirty side over here. But tonight, that storm's not going that way. Tonight, the storm's going this way, heading out, kind of to the north, northeast, or maybe even this way. And so the dirty quadrant's going to be about right here, down to here. So that should be the rough, rocking, biggest torque. And that's why when we have early storms in the season, we watch them and we're like, well, you know what's going on? It's all right-hand sided, all the big developments here. But tonight, when this thing made landfall, we had big eruptions on the back in the west side, which would be actually almost the back side of the storm. I think what was happening is it was getting sheared and maybe it gave it a little lift. I can't explain it, except the water was warm, the storm was over land, and the back side just lit up like a big thunderstorm and then wrapped around the center again. So it has been a weird, weird storm, but it's flattening out now. As I was talking about, it looks like it's being squished on the backside and being eroded. And the heaviest part of it is this eye wall remnant up here. And I was thinking earlier that as it comes through, I don't believe, I'm not sure this is gonna wrap all the way around that strongly. I think it was coming down here, it's hitting drier air and being gobbled up a little bit. I think eventually this will detach from the center and go and be a big rain producer across the northern part. So as far as why it erupted on the backside, I really can't explain it, but we all saw it happen. Yeah, I, I, I was hoping the eye was going to go south of uh, Hunter's Creek. It looks like it's going to. I thought, okay. Well, it may. Uh, I mean, north of Hunter's Creek, I should say. I, yeah, I should it, say right, yeah. It's going to get right in there very close to you. Let's put, cruise up here and get past the Kissimmee area, right up into the southern part of the viewing area. There's Windermere, Dr. Phillips. Where are you? are not popping up for whatever reason. Where are right, you? Right, one more quick question. Yeah, man, go. Uh, the last path you showed, it went an inch north, then it started going northeast. Well, what are the steering currents right now? What makes you think it's going to go north for an inch and then start going northeast? What, what, well, what dictates that? What's, what it's got going on is that there's a front laying across the zone. And the front's basically stationary, and it kind of has drifted. Pick up my marker again to show you what's going on. The front's like right through here and kind of lingers. And so it's kind of caught up to the thing, pushing it this way. So the front goes way up. And this thing's going to come up and be picked up and go around. And the upper level steering currents, the ridge of high pressure off the east coast, and the low up north, it'll sense that gap between them and shoot back into Charleston or Savannah or somewhere in that zone. It will not be the monster storm for them that it's been for us, but it will get into that zone. The folks in Charleston are on standby for Friday already. I've talked to them online. They know. You know it's not like they don't see it coming four or five days out. They say, well, the modeling's pointing that way. 
So it's going to be the upper airflow right. that will push it back into the southeast once it gets off the coast. Great. Outstanding, Tom. Thank Good you for my call. Hey, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Do we have anybody else? Are we done? All right. We're going to be done for a moment. One more time. Let me get rid of this stuff and clean it all up and Oh, take it off the board here and show you exactly what's been happening. Downtown Orlando getting soaked. All the rain keeps coming in. Copious amounts of rainfall have already occurred in central Florida. That's going to continue through the night tonight. We're waiting on the wind to really pick it up. I was just talking to meteorologist Candace Campos, and she said, you know what's happening? People are starting to ride in. They're starting to get their power blown out. It's starting to really become an issue. Like we knew that it would. Look at the gradient on the colors here. All this activity here you're seeing, we're still in some decent wind in Orlando. By decent, I mean things that you can handle. Okay, 19 mile per hour wind, not a big deal. Wind over here, 27. You get down here past Oak Ridge, down to the south, 36 mile per hour wind. We're talking about some major winds starting to develop here down to the southland. So here's Kissimmee, winds aloft are 45 miles per hour. Haines City, 55, Winter Haven. 66, so appreciable wind, good, really strong, upper level tropical storm force winds are on the way. And I think some of you will end up with hurricane force winds, if not sustained wind, at least hurricane force gust, which will do a lot of damage, take a lot of oak trees down, those southern live oaks, I love them so much, but they are really power killers when the storms come through. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I, you know, Tom, your last guy they called. Sometimes you do the forecast and you, on a regular basis when it's uh -huh. not a storm. And you do the seven day and you do the four. And we will ask you right after. It's like, hey, Tom, what's it going to be like this weekend? What I heard from this guy is that he's been watching you for years. Mm -hmm. And he said something that was very telling. He says, you have taught us over the years that the dirty side of the storm is this. So that means that people, they're listening we don't always oh, yeah. know that they're listening, and they're also <laughs> learning. And you, I, I, no, seriously, because yeah, we sit I here, <laughs> we sit here, we're like, what's it going to be like this weekend, Tom? Right, and you just get home and get the same thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the wife just, this just is like, like, oh my gosh, because you've taught me, and my wife said, what'd you do today? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's it's just nice to hear that that over the years that you've you've made a difference in people's lives. And Thank you very much. Yeah. You're too yeah. kind. Yeah, we all learn a lot from you. All right, Tom. All right, we'll give you a little break here, and then we'll check Thanks. in with you in a minute.